Hello, and welcome to the RPG Academy podcast Twitch channel. My name is Michael, and we're here today for the first ever live edition of TTRPG crowdfunding review show. And this is where myself, Ellen, and Larry gather together usually every other week. Sometimes things happen. And we take a look at nine-ish. There's a lot of specifics in this show. Uh, currently funding TTRPG campaigns. Uh, sometimes we find diamonds in the rough that we want you to maybe check out. Other times we're looking at the same thing everyone else is. But we play some little games, we talk to each other, and we try to show uh, some things that maybe you want to get involved with if you haven't already. This show will cost you money because it certainly costs me money. Uh, so again, my name is Michael. Joining me as always is Ellen. Ellen, say hello to everyone. Hi. All right. And then again, in this case, we do have some people that may be watching for the first time ever. Just kind of briefly tell us who you are and any of the other channels and twit streams and podcasts that you're a part of. Sure. Yeah. Um, you can find me irregularly on Twitter posting art that I do. Um, I take commissions and also just draw a bunch of like of my own characters. Um, play too many games all the time. I You can find me playing one too many game on um, the Isle of Misfit Rolls, uh, which I believe is twitch.tv slash Misfit Rolls. Um, and that is on Tuesday nights at nine o'clock Eastern. Um, other than that, I have two defunct podcasts that I used to run that were Savage Worlds podcasts that I tend to get back to at one point in the future. Um, but other than that, I also do art and games over on Chaotic Wonderful, which is twitch.tv slash Chaotic Wonderful. So I was not ready to have those links and stuff appear on the stream, but we do have them in the show notes. So anyone who is interested, if you check out the show notes for any of our previous shows or, or this one that when it comes out on the podcast form, all the links to everybody's stuff will be in there. All right. And Larry, how about you, sir? Hey, good morning, everybody. Hello. First time to Twitch. Um, uh, you can find us here, like you said, every a couple every couple weeks we do this show. And also I do a Mumphrey's Musings on AnchorCast as a podcast, weekly or biweekly, just detailing uh, goings on on my home games here. Um, and I had, uh, you speaking of defunct uh, podcast there, I think it was the Birdhouse Mysteries is where I first heard or ran into Ellen's content and it is uh, definitely worth a listen a wonderful Savage Worlds live play podcast it was it was really a good listen well thank you <laughs> Uh, so for myself, of course, you can find pretty much everything I do at the RPG Academy. Unless you're into Smallville, then I have a Smallville Rewatch pod podcast called Farm to Fable. Uh, in about 12 days, I'll be at a Catacon, the gaming convention that we run. And I've just, early next year, I should be starting a new live stream campaign, and it's going to be Savage Worlds. So Ooh. exciting news on that front. So with that out of the way, we're going to jump into the show as we always do. So basically, each of us brought three... Sometimes we try to sneak in some extras. Uh, currently funding TTRPG crowdfunding campaigns that you, uh, dear listener and possibly dear watcher, might want to be uh, aware of so we can help you spend some money. And today I'm going to start things off with the Monty Python's Co-Curricular Medieval Reenactment Program. So this one is being ran by Exalted Funeral. And they've ran several in the past. Their most recent one was for an OSE Essentials boxed set that hit almost seven hundred and like thirty thousand dollars. So really large Kickstarters is not necessarily something new for them, but I'm pretty sure that this one has exceeded all of their expectations. I do not think they were anticipating that it would get to this level because it is already at one point four million dollars. It's only been running for like five days. It has already hit every stretch goal that they had listed. And according to some of the recent, um, you know, communication, they are look, trying to figure out more to add. But I, at this point, I don't know that they can because it looks like it's a pretty full uh, campaign as is. Uh, you know, I am of the age and of the D&D uh, &D and RPG persuasion that Monty Python and Sir Silly Grail was a huge point, uh, touch point in my life. And yes, a lot of my games do devolve to games like that. And I, I don't know that I ever go through a session that I don't at least throw out one reference to the Monty Python movies, if not that, you know, Holy Roll specifically. So this is definitely something in my wheelhouse. But I don't know that the game itself, like, I don't really, I, you know, I have no idea what the game, like, if you're playing a game that's supposed to be Holy Grail, does it turn into an actual, like, serious and emotionally drama-driven campaign? Like, I don't know how that works. Like, how do you properly spoof a spoof? But they're giving it a shot, and a whole lot of people are interested. So, again, I am having a, have a feeling anyone listening or watching to this is already aware of this one, but we're going to go over it anyways. 
Uh, very much all of the information in the Kickstarter is the same tongue in cheek stuff that you would expect. Everything's written, you know, knowing what the joke is and leaning into the joke, but it does appear to be an actual RPG that you can actually play. It has kind of an interesting dice mechanic. I'm trying to get it to it here. Um, I, I'm not familiar with this one. I don't, so I don't know if they've created their own or if they something they have borrowed or lifted from another game, but I'm just not familiar with it. But basically you have five traits that you're going to select for your character and they have serious names like valor, purpose, decorum, chastity, and wisdom, or in the ways of science. They also have a silly expression and whether or not you're using the serious or silly expression will determine which die that you roll to try to hit the target number. But then there's also a, a mechanic where if you roll the maximum number on that die, so say your, your, your trait of wisdom is at a D10 and you roll a 10, you now struthing and you move your D10, it's now a D12. So if later you roll a 12 on that D12, it would go up again to a 14. So you can basically level up your die, kind of like Savage Worlds in a way, but, but it's not, it's, it seems like it continues to go up until you spam, which is where you roll a one, and then you would move it back down. So the value of the die that you roll based on your traits, which also depends on if you're struthing or spamming, or no, sorry, serious or uh, serious, can go up or down throughout the course of the play. I don't know if like a D4 is like the target numbers all off Savage Worlds, so I don't have any of that information. It also seems to have some DCC in it because the die sizes are weird. There's a D14, a D16, and a D18. So it's basically four through 20 is, you know, normal set, and they've added in the 14 and the 16 and the 18. So that's weird, uh, but maybe in a good way. Uh, there is a mini game um, that basically translates to, I think, Catch the Cow, and it's played on a backgammon board and you have a little die catapult and you like flip your die and you're trying to knock over or catch, I guess, the cows that are being flung. Again, if you watch the movie, you kind of know how that works. Um, very much silly, but uh, interesting. That dice mechanic has actually got me thinking like, that's kind of an interesting thing. I, I would like to see that in play. Um, if you are the GM, you're the head of light entertainment, which is a joke from again, from their old shorts and from the movies. Uh, as far as um, pledge levels go, there's basically a $25 PDF edition, just get you the PDFs, and then you have things like the sensible middle class edition, the public school bundle, the less sensible middle class bundle, uh, in the in my day bundle, the not, all sens not at all sensible middle class bundle, and the upper class twit bundle, which uh, comes in at uh, but $250. So basically that's what you're looking at your range, 25 for PDF, all the way up to 250 for everything printed, all the stretch goals, all the uh, ex exemplary or extemporary stuff. I think that's how you say that word. There's also a shop bundle if you want to get 10 copies of the game. Um, shipping is extra, not shocking at this point. And so yeah, here's all the stretch goals they have gone through. If you're watching, you can see I'm flipping through the screen here. Uh, to do, do show shipping. Uh, if you're in the U.S. for the cheapest print bundle, it's going to be estimated 10 to 14. Similar in the U.K., roughly double that in Canada, and then it goes all the way up to the upper class twit bundle is estimated 20 to 20 or 23 to 26 in the U.S. Similar in the U.K. and 33 to 36 in Canada. All right, so I'm going to guess that one or both of you were already somewhat familiar with this one, but have you any of you checked it out? Has, has anyone backed this one yet? I haven't, uh, but you know that I like stuff, and it has a lot of cool stuff with it. It does have cool stuff. Like the dice set itself is just very neat, and like you can get that with the um, the regular print reward. So that I'm like, ooh, but do I need it? Is the question. Oh no, and... no one needs it. But that's not <laughs> what this show's about. There's no need to come into the conversation on this show. But I think it looks really cool. Like it looks very polished. And that is something that um, you know, is obviously a point in its favor. Like it looks like a lot of thought has gone into this and it's sticking to a lot of the um themes and conventions of the show and the skits and every and the movies and stuff like that. And so I I grew up on Monty Python. So this is very intriguing to me i don't i agree with you i don't know that i would necessarily play it it might be a thing that i buy to have which is not which is something i'm trying to move away from doing <laughs> i i understand that but i certainly still do that i i buy a lot of things that are just because i want to own them oh yeah absolutely sadly. yeah i i agree and like the the kickstarter exclusive 
edition looks really cool like the the book and that is my the bane of my existence i always love uh, when it says exclusive i'm like oh i need Ooh, it oh yes exclusive <laughs> um, means no, i must think, have that i think this looks really cool and it, the fact that i say that i don't think i would play the game is not because i don't like the mechanics or i don't like what has been said i think all the stuff you have described looks really cool and very interesting it's just i like to play games where i'm dramatic and depressing and mm -hmm. this is not going to let me be dramatic <laughs> and depressing so that is the only reason why i'm hesitant um but totally that is a personal pre that's a personal preference like yeah, this no, looks yeah. amazing this looks amazing i i do think again we've we've talked a lot over on the discord if anybody's in our discord we talk a lot about ip games um you know they have come out some look great some look pretty bad some that are shoehorned into 5e for no apparent reason Whoops, well. I just hit a button I wasn't supposed to hit. Um, I don't know what I've done there. So, oh, well. Um, sorry, now I'm distracted. But this one does seem to be one that they've taken a lot of thought. Like, they didn't just slap the name on a game that already existed. And like, hey, can we make this seem like, I, it feels like this was kind of built from the ground up to to be this game. And so I definitely will give them credit there. And so, I don't know. It's, I'm I'm sure someone in my circle at, at $1.4 million, someone I know will have bought it. So there's a good chance I'll get a chance to look at it. And that, you know, 25 bucks for the PDF. I'm not, I have so many PDFs that I don't ever look at. Yes. Uh, they're just in, they're in my hard drive and I will probably never, ever play them because I'm dumb, but that's not a bad price just to have it. And then you could read the rules, but I don't know that this is probably not something I'm going to back at a physical level, but I might end up with a PDF level just to have it. They certainly did put a great attachment as far as the name goes. Cause like you mentioned, there's so many people, people that are just new to 5e or something, maybe not, but the farther back you go, it seems like, like you said, a lot of games devolve into this because so many people have it as a touchstone of Monty mm. Python and, yeah, it's got a lot. This is going to be one I think I'm going to get just to read it. And if it goes farther than that, great. If not, it's still going to be good entertainment. Yeah, again, there's probably something we could, you know, use use from it. And I mean, yeah, anytime I run, if I have like an overly dramatic NPC that I, of course, forgot to name, and they, what's your name? It's going to be Tim. Like, it just happens. It's just the way it works. And then look look at the bones. Like, I mean, there's so many times that the, that touchstone. All right. So with that out of the way, we're going to move on. So I think, Ellen, I have you up next. So what is your first one this week? We've talked about Savage Worlds. We've mentioned it several times. And that is what I'm going to be talking about because that is my thing. Um, Yay! Um, one moment, please, while I look over. Okay. All right. So um, Pine Box Middle School and the Horror Companion double feature. I was so excited to see this email come in my <sighs> inbox. Um, I The second it appeared i was like oh, yes <laughs> um because i love all the companion books that exist for um the previous editions of um savage worlds i love the uh ones that exist currently which include um the superpowers companion and the uh fantasy companion i would say the superpowers companion is pretty good the fantasy companion is amazing that is also due to like my own genre persuasions Perfect. and yeah. interests but um the f everything I've seen so far of the pre-final for the Fantasy Companion, because I backed that one, is amazing. So I have great high hopes for the Horror Companion, and I love ETU. I love East Texas University. So adding a kids on bikes style thing for Pine Box, Texas, is like, obviously you needed to take my money. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, um, we have the Horror Companion. So uh, the idea behind these companions is they kind of flesh out um aspects of the game that aren't part of the core rules so this one focuses on horror you'll be able to make um everything you need to make your spooky pcs npcs um settings all that kind of stuff um and then pine Box middle school um i don't it's funny <laughs> i didn't realize that the kids on bike second edition was coming out but that is the third thing that i am talking about today. oh okay okay um so it's a very kids on bikes day for me but um, the idea is you are basically like um, Stranger Things, like you are playing youths who are, um, you know, running Two around youths. doing, yeah. <laughs> you are uh, running around solving mysteries and making curfew or not making curfew and just like trying to survive homework and also elder horrors. And so this, the fact that it's going to flesh out more of Pine Box, Texas, like I love that setting. I love everything about it. I'm very excited. It's going to add to my ETU games. Like the possibility of running players who start 
in middle school I go through college in Pine Box, Texas is amazing to me and I'm psyched for it. So um, there is that. Um, there are a lot of really cool things that they always do, like the architect archetype sets where they have cards for like um, default NPCs or PCs that you can have. Um, I'm looking through the page. Um, oh, they always do figure flats. So you can get them digitally or you can get them physically or you can get them both. And then they're just like flats for tokens for um, your generic monsters and such. Um, the box set looks really cool. I have to say I am restraining myself and only getting the digital version this time. So uh, I just realized I'm that I have my Kickstarter account. That's what we're looking. So you can see that I have also already backed it. At setting, so if you're looking <laughs> on to OBS, you can see I've already selected that. Yeah, so I've backed in all in digital as well. Yes um because that is like a really reasonable price for digital i will get to all the pricing later in a second but um it's it seems really reasonable um and just the amount of stuff that you're going to get between like the horror action deck horror pawns um all kinds of things like that in the box set including maps and like a um i really i have the uh DM screen for um, Deadlands. I got the box set for the Deadlands Kickstarter and it's a really nice, it's like, it's the same width as their books or no, it's the same length as their books. So it's like not a huge DM screen, but mm -hmm. it has all the rules laid out very nicely and usefully. And I think it's a great DM screen. So um, there is that too. Um, but yes, so the best deal obviously is the all in print one. And that's what they say it's the best deal. Just monetarily, like $200 for the amount of stuff you're going to be getting is pretty good. Um, that includes literally everything, like the companion, all the extras, uh, all the stretch goals, the um, Pine Box Middle School book art and archetypes, the maps, um, all, blah, 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 all the extras in print and in PDF. Um, so that's nice. Um, I will say, like, I have not been let down by... Um, uh, well, we've talked about like the timing and stuff on Kickstarters before, and I will say that I'm one who doesn't really care if it takes a little longer. Like, there's a, a difference between taking five years versus never versus like maybe an extra year. I don't really care if it takes an extra year because like I know I'm going to get it eventually. I will say that um, Peg, uh, the creators of Savage Worlds, I have not been let down by their process. They are very good about um, when the PDFs are available, letting you have the updated versions and getting people involved in the play testing of that and, so, and stuff like that. So I think they are usually very good at it, um, which is why I'm going digitally also because I don't have enough bookshelf space, but that's mm -hmm. my own personal problem. But um, you can get either of the um, PDFs for uh, $25, not $25. I was looking at 75 and then at 20 for $20, either or, or 40 for um, the either or book in print. And then everything for the horror companion or everything for uh, Pine Box Middle School for 50 and then 55 respectively. So there's a little more content in the Pine Box Middle School, which makes sense because it's a whole new thing. It's a whole new setting essentially um, versus just a companion to the core rules. Um, the then uh, digitally it is seventy five dollars for all in, which is what Michael and I have both done. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then uh, scrolling a uh, hundred dollars for uh, everything for print for the hard companion, or one hundred fifty for everything for um, Pine Box Middle School. So if you look at that, like it is a better deal if you want all of the print stuff to get it all at the top tier because separately they would be fifty more dollars. So right. Yeah. Um, and they are set to deliver May of next year. It's the, but the PDF should be available next month, which is very exciting because I haven't looked at that until right now. So, so technically December. So we're, we're not quite in November. So about a month and a half. Wait, it says, oh. At least, at least what I'm looking at now is the digital is December 2022. Interesting. It says on the, um, the, the individual ones it says november for both uh, of them on but the pledge level it says, it says december so i don't know if they are counting for like the latest thing that would be uh, available so maybe, maybe some of the extras but it looks like the basic pdfs they are saying would be available in november okay but even yeah. better then yeah. so as i kind of mentioned so the next campaign that i'm planning on starting as a live stream is going to be in savage worlds and it's definitely got a horror 
bent to it. Uh, I said it's basically it's, it's somewhat it's somewhat inspired by Dark Tower, uh, the Stephen King series of stories, but but only in the specific way that the characters in that game will be from our world who have died, and then much like Jake, wakes up mm-hmm. in this other world. So it's not going to be like. Uh, beyond that, it's not going to be very dark cavalry, but the way that these characters get to that world is the same way Jake got to the to, to mid world. Uh, so when I, as soon as I saw this, I was like, okay, I already have Savage World Adventure Edition. I don't play as much as I should. I'm going to restart a new stream. It's going to be horror inclined. So yeah, so that was an easy back for me. And Stranger Things is one of my favorite TV, mm-hmm. TV shows in the last 20 years. I started playing role playing games when I was around 12. I very much had the Stranger Things sort of childhood experience where I jump on my bike, I'd be gone for like the entire weekend. My parents would not know where I was. We'd go out in the woods and we'd climb rocks and, you know, explore caves and try to build cabins. And I have no idea whose lane we were on. We were just cutting stuff and burning and stuff. So I have a lot of love in my heart for those types of games. So that was also an easy one. And I'll be honest, I played kids on bikes. I wasn't a fan. I like really? the setup a lot. Like all the, like, how do you build the mystery and build the connections? But when it actually comes to running the actual game, I was not a fan of the mechanics of that game. But I haven't checked out second edition. So, yeah. All right, Larry, how about you? Any thoughts on Savage Worlds, on horror or Stranger Things inspired games? Uh, Other than the ones I've backed, like I think you mentioned there just a minute ago, the superheroes one, the hard, uh, the print just came out. These guys know how to run a Kickstarter. They, they've got, it seems like it's ready to go. Like you said, they close down, they get their money, you get your PDFs, and then the print stuff comes along later. And the box sets, I've got, I got the back or the back, the Deadlands with the box stuff. And it is chunk full of minis. And it's, it's a, it is a good value, good system. Yes. Awesome. And I don't know if we, uh, you're, you're blurry. There you go. Yeah. I have it right here. And I love it. I don't know if we mentioned, but there's uh, 18 days to go as of right now. I think both the one I did too had just started. So I think it's okay. They only had a $6,660 goal, which I get the, the, the joke there, but there are almost at a hundred thousand dollars, the, you know, but before we're done talking about it, it will probably get there. So they've well, well, well overfunded. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I, do they have any stretch goals that they haven't hit yet? Do you know? I didn't see. Uh, I didn't look. I was too excited about the base stuff. Let me look. Um, they have goals. a lot of add-ons that they normally do. Stretch goals, uh, playable monsters, adversary cards. So they have two. They have a Lovecraftian monster horror and a more monster and talesman at 100,000, 110,000. They're going to hit those. So it's just a matter if they're going to add any more, I think, after that. Ooh, I'm excited. I love I love their pre-made talismans that they have in ATU, but they just don't have enough of them. So I'm very excited for them to add more. Fantastic. All right. So with that, we're going to move on. And Larry, I think we have you next. Yes, sir. Uh, with the grimoire of the grave. Yes. Grimoire, I guess. I, I'm from Kentucky. All right. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Just east of France. But anyways, yeah, the grimoire of the grave, the ultimate fifth edition guide to undead. Uh, this one is done by 2C Gaming. Uh, 20 created already, 19 backed. Um. I don't know whether to front load this or tell it at the end, but going back through several of their projects, it seems like they have, they have their bigger projects. They have been lagging behind on Mm -hmm. delivery several months. A couple of them has been like 11, 12 months uh, behind, but again, that's delivering physical products. And, and so that is something if you're wanting to get this and I wouldn't hold them too tight to that schedule, if that's going to be an issue for you. But I think that happens a lot with these bigger ones that, you know, you just keep adding kickstart or add on stretch goals because you're doing so well, but then that pushes back everything. I, w- I would be more forgiving for the first couple, but if they've done that several times, then they should eventually get better at figuring out their estimates. But, but I don't, I mean, again, I'm just, I haven't done one yet. So wait till after action 12 cinema, and then you can yell at me for being late. Yeah. If you go back through all of, uh, through the comments and through their updates, it it's through other projects of theirs many many mentions of thank you for your patience and we're running you know late and it a lot of it has to do with uh, you know having things printed in china and such but onto the project itself this is again fifth edition dungeons and dragons compatible uh it's sitting around 46 almost 47,000 now of an initial goal of 20,000 this one is going to be running up through november 6th so you've got some time to take a look at this and if you're in the market for a fifth edition game specifically but if you want to 
flesh out your undead, excuse the pun, then I think this book is right up your alley. Because going through, they give you a, I think it's a 20 page PDF you can download and look through. And yes, there is a typo on one of the creatures and it's already been brought to their attention. So <laughs> there's that. But going through this thing, uh, it is written with asides from a doctor. Um, let's see, Molly, I believe it is, she's a necromancer. Or sorry, Dr. Victoria Wallstone is putting there's, there's uh, bits of information here it's kind of like van richten's guide where you've got um you've got the lore you also have a lot of mechanics and things to help your design and um sort of aggressively advanced some of the creatures here but as far as taking undead and and it further divides down instead of just having like an undead archetype it's splits it down into different types of undead it talks about over time them developing communities communities and leadership roles and um uh, ecology for it it gives you uh two different classes the phantom and the revenant to be used as player characters um it also offers a lot of some new undead and some specific like unique undead that are named and have histories to them and things uh some tips for building out campaigns focused on playing undead it really has so much here if you're wanting to take a, a book like this put it in your campaign or even build a campaign just on undead this covers so many different bases about having things ready to just pull right out and use for character creation for your villain creations and and even small nations uh, at large community communities of undead so much stuff it's very specific but if, if that was something that you want to put into your game or build a game around it this is definitely uh worth taking a look at um the, the pledge levels on this one are looking at uh, pdf is 25 dollars to get in on this and it's expected to deliver in october of 23 so next year and then the print is looking at april of 2024 so that's well out into the future um so that's maybe, something maybe they took my mind. advice retroactively and push those <laughs> push, dates back because that does push. seem like quite a way was away right especially when you've got starters running right now that are going to be fulfilling in a couple of months or something for a pdf so yeah um, and, and again there, there's been issues with people trying to get a hold of them on the comments about previous projects and it's taking two three weeks lead time to for even people to get responses to that mm -hmm. so they just seem like they are really busy right now with things so that's something to keep in mind if this is something that you need right now this is probably isn't going to be available unless you can run off what you get out of the downloadable pdf yeah. um it's a 24 page uh, uh pdf promo that you can download but they give you the table of contents for the book if you're looking for something specific to see if it's addressed in there um but honestly it covers so much epic undead and again it's unique undead it talks about how you become undead what happens after so long there's just been a lot of thought put into this book. Um, hopefully it all comes to fruition because it seems like it's going to provide a tremendous amount of information for you to play with or as undead in your games. Um, they've met uh, goals for uh, expanding their undead encyclopedia, uh, adding additional art. And if they keep going, they're going to be closing in on adding another undead base class. They've got two in the book so far. Um Again, it's looking like well over a year before it's going to be uh, deliverable. Um, there is uh, sections on here on evolving undead as far as taking a standard undead, and then it gives you branches where you can improve it. It's going to cre create a more deadly, dangerous type of undead, but it'll also make it different, something your players wouldn't have seen because uh, you know, you've created something that that hasn't been there f before so there's tools in there for you know increasing the danger and utility of your undead monsters as well so uh they're doing shipping by backer kit after the kickstarter ends and you can look at some of their other games that have made it to production like dragonflight where which lets you play as a dragon as a pc that's uh, available as an add-on too and uh, they did the venture the venture maidens the campaign guide for that so they've they've got a lot of good products out there. It just seems like it they're a little overwhelmed at the moment. But uh, you know these will be coming down the pike. They do fulfill. It's just uh, been a little bit later than usual. 
So they're only offering the two versions, PDF and then the print here. There's not a bunch of uh, of really add-ons to go with in this, although you can get a DM screen uh, specifically tailored to the undead and there's some pins that are, are cute and interesting. Yeah, it looks like you can also get like a previous Kickstarter book, The Dragon Flight. So if you wanna add on something that you might've missed, uh, so looking at the stretch goals, they they have hit one already at 40,000. They're currently at 46. And then at 50, they have an art expansion. And then at 65, um, an undead base class, The Fallen. Um, so, so they're, you know, about 20,000 away from that. But they've still got two weeks to go. They might get there. I think they'll hit the 51 pretty easy. The 65, unless they get a huge oh. influx near the end, that, that one's probably going to be hard for them to get to. Right, this one runs up uh, until was it the third? Uh, six. No, the sixth of November. So it ends when the catacon. I'll, I'll be on driving home as this one ends. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Sunday afternoon. Right. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, so, uh, Ellen, do you have anything on this one? Uh, I like that they let you preview the table of contents. I think that's really cool. And I think more people should do that, especially on these like uh, books that are kind of supposed to be encyclopedia in nature, um, mm -hmm. because it can really let you know if there's something that you're specifically interested in in this Kickstarter. Um, and then also the deluxe print version looks really cool. That's my <laughs> comment. <laughs> yeah, so... Um... I, I'm somewhat friendly with 2C Gaming. They they were actually one of our largest sponsors last year for Catacon. I was not able to get to, want to come back this year. Probably my fault, not theirs. Uh, so I certainly wish them all the best because if they get enough money, maybe they'll give me more next time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving on. So my second one this week is Star Sworn, a compendium of adventures. So full disclosure, I am friendly with the creator, the main creator, Michael Lowe. He's been on detention before. Um, he's good friends with Mo Popular. He's been on our show a couple of times. They're both in our Discord. I've talked to him a little bit. They've both taken a look at Action 12 Cinema for me. I couldn't find him like on the map. I have no idea where he lives. I haven't been to his house. Don't know his kids. But uh, we are friendly when it comes to online interaction. Uh, so this one, they only had a goal of $200. They're almost at 5,000 now. So they had a very small sort of reasonable first real sort of game on Kickstarter expectations. And they have very much exceeded that already. So well-funded and still has 26 days to go. So again, the creator is Michael Lowe. Um, he's a high school teacher and a game designer. And I know he actually teaches courses about how games can be used to teach children. And almost all the games that I've talked to him about are all very much in, in the educational bent. Uh, they're all super simple. And despite all my urging that D12s are objectively superior to any other form of polyhedral, he insists on using D6s only because they are so readily available. Anybody who has a Monopoly set in their closet from the 1940s can round up a couple D6s. So that's why he insists, though he's wrong, to continue to use them. Um, so we've got some or information here on some of the people who have uh, participated and helped out, that kind of thing. But uh, basically, Star Sworn is a storytelling game for all ages, a combination of coloring book, choose your own adventure, and role playing game. That essentially anyone can pick up and play together. So uh, the creators are the writer of the stories podcast, uh, Daniel Hines, and then the teacher, Michael Lowe. Uh, he also does Luck of Legends. So I guess there's a companion podcast that you can listen to as well. Uh, basically the game's done. The Kickstarter is just to raise fun to do a print run of the game. Uh, so if you can see here again, there's going to be a uh, eight by eight and a half by 11 color cover black and white compendium about 90 pages. Uh, there will be PDF support. So like uh, you can print out multiple versions of the coloring book pages and that kind of thing if you want to do. Uh, the gameplay itself is pretty simple, as you would expect for this type of game. Uh, there's a lot of like prompts. You get to choose sort of what you will do. You will then roll dice based off of your stats and your character. And you will basically see if you have a triumph in that situation, if they have a trouble in that situation or both. So it kind of works like PBTA there. You have a success, a failure, or a success at a cost. And that will sort of direct you on where you go next in the choose your own adventure. Uh, the pledge levels are pretty, uh, there's a, obviously a dollar support the team. Uh, $5 gets you the digital toolkit, which is not the complete game. It is a version of the base rules, but I do not believe it is the entire like 90 page compendium in PDF. That will actually cost you $15. But at that level, you also get some additional content as well. 
And then the printed edition is $25. There is no extra cost for shipping, but it is US only. And I think that's about it. Uh, so delivery is expected this year. So again, the game's done, ready to go. They're just trying to get money for the print run. So the PDF levels, you'll get them just about as soon as the, the Kickstarter closes next month in November. And then the print versions, again, US only, are expected to ship in December. So this is a very sort of short, tight Kickstarter, which I do think is a, a good choice for your first one. There's still 26 days to go. Again, they're at $4,800 on their goal of 200. Uh, I don't think there's any stretch goals. The campaign's not going to get any bigger. This just more people that want in. There um, are so some. It, oh, there are. Okay, my apologies. Sure. So it does end on November 19th. So let me scroll back down here. Just, oh, okay. So there's a $500 community copies. Obviously, they crushed that. So they've already got 100 extra copies available for the community. World building was at 1,000. They got that. Story class, 2,000. Uh, new adventure here at 5,000. So they're just a couple hundred bucks away for an additional adventure that will be included. And then they have some undefined ones at 7, 10, and 12. So that could just be them hedging their bets, hoping they get there, or maybe they actually have stuff planned. I don't know. I haven't talked to Michael about it. All right. So have either of you seen this one or any thoughts on this one? Uh, I backed it once you started talking about it. <laughs> okay, um, great. It looks really cute and it looks really fun. And that is like, you want cute and you want fun. So um, <laughs> we've honestly, hit all of Ellen's buttons today. Right. Like, <laughs> honestly, the, fact that to get everything is $25 and it includes shipping that's like you can't beat that really yeah. um so that was a very easy yes um and it looks uh, I love the choose your own adventure style and it looks very um compelling it looks like it'll be fun to play so mm -hmm. all right well Michael you're you're welcome sir I got you one back for at least <laughs> I, I think I'm going to probably go in on this one too, but just oh, because it sounds too. so neat uh, and interesting, it just depends on whether you want to book with it or whether you're good with just reading it on screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Very, very cool. So I think, um, so I have my things out of order. So I actually think Larry's next with you meet in a tavern. So we're going to mix up the order a little bit. I'm sure I'll screw it up again later, but so Larry, you're actually up now for you meet in a tavern, you die in a dungeon. Okay, I think I can do this. So rude. A little, <laughs> I'm, so sorry. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. A little flip flop. Um, this one I, I I did back this one. It's on Kickstarter. You meet in a tavern, you die in a dungeon. You know, sure, you've heard that line before, but this is the game. So this is a procedural <laughs> dungeon crawl RPG where all the dungeoneers are destined to die. That's an important part of the setup. Uh, it had a there's conversion to the U.S. dollars here, so there's a fifty-six hundred dollar goal. They've almost tripled it. They're up almost to thirteen thousand at this point, so it's fully funded. It's only running through November third, so this one's about a week left on this. Uh, well, I'm sorry, a little bit more than that, ten days or so on this as of recording, right? Uh, so this one is uh, created by Ursa Dice. This is only his second one created. He's backed 52 other ones. The other one he created is a solo journaling game. So I don't know, uh, that might be of interest to some of you too. But it was delivered on time and uh, people seemed happy with that. This one, um, you're looking at a pledge of 20, let's see, $25, which gets you the physical and digital deliverable in October of 2023. Um, if you want to just to get the digital, it's still October 2023, but uh, it is $14. Um, and they also have a tier available as a hardship tier for roughly half that, uh, if you can take available that. The early bird stuff is, is, is all gone. But um, what you get with this, um, they have a the video for the Kickstarter shows you uh, a little bit about the creator taking some of his friends through the game. Uh, there are going to be three uh, fully illustrated zines. Looks like all black and white art for these. There are going to be three zines to, to use in parallel to play, set up and play the game. Um, he answered one of my questions uh, on, on, on an update, and each of these is going to be roughly 30 pages. So you're going to have three more or less equal ones. It's split into a Dungeoneer's Handbook. This is everything that you need for playing the game. There's going to be a Keeper's Guide 
for the person that's going to run the dungeon. There's going to be rules in there for running the dungeon, uh, tools and help and tips for running your sessions, as well as designing your own dungeons and hazards to run your dungeoneers through. And then the third booklet is a dungeon manual. And this one has actual dungeon rooms that are already set up with their own hazards and loot so that you can use it as a ready to go adventure. And this is more set up to be uh, like an introduction to this type of game. So you don't have to have previous experience with this. Um, it's more or less almost like a party type beer and pretzels game where you can sit down Part of the fun is the community of you sitting around a table or digitally sitting there talking to each other, designing your characters. And part of that is going to be coming up with, uh, and this is all in the booklets too, to help you get started. There are some roles you can make or choices to get um, links between your characters, background uh, between your characters. And some of them are meant to sort of be like secretive, like somebody's got a grudge against somebody else that they don't know about that can be, you know, brought out through play. And there are, are tips to help you try to bring that about through play. But it's supposed to be sort of a light, fun game because in the end, everybody dies. Uh, and that is also pre generated. You're supposed to be able to fully have full control, narrative control over your character's death scene so that uh, you know how they're going to go out and at an opportune time towards hopefully towards the end of the dungeon. So you don't just spend a lot of time as an extra. Uh, you know, everybody gets their little spotlight uh, and can die uh, either satisfyingly horrible death or maybe uh, you sacrifice yourself to do something bravely. But I, again, that's part of the setup of the game. Is you know you're going to die um so this is not meant to be taken uh, at, you know as much uh, serious in it the role play should be fun the game's uh dice is the mechanics on it are fairly simple you do need a d12 and 2d6 for this so it's <laughs> similar to a Fact. fighting fan <laughs> <laughs> fight <laughs> fighting fantasy inspired roll under mechanic so the rules are set up and uh, to be easily explained and easy to use through play. So again, this is designed for people to be introduced into a role-playing game if they haven't played, but there's also some depth to the game so that your, your veterans and people that have played other games we can still get a, um, some enjoyment out of it. It may be take a break from your regular game and, and play this for an evening. Um, but uh, I, the art is all, again, black and white, but the art is pretty cool for uh, that they've shown here for it. Uh, roughly 30 pages for each of the three magazines. And it's going to be, um, I think shipping on this one was also doing after uh, after uh, it is done. Yeah, shipping's charged through backer kit. Um, so take a look at this one. I like the simplicity of it. I like the setup of it. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun, especially for a one-shot uh, and see you know, if people take a bite out of this and really enjoy it, then you may end up pulling in some other folks to be regular players in some of your other types types of uh, deeper RPG games. Um, I don't think we missed anything else out of this. Uh, it's it's funded. They've uh, funded a poster for the physical backers that they'll be getting, and they fu funded a dungeon deck, which is going to be, again, part of a physical you know, handheld object here that... Uh, they, uh, that's the only uh, extended stretch goals that they had so far, and they did meet those when they passed the 10,000 pound mark. So uh, you take a look. They tell you what they're, what they're planning on spending the money on. The first stretch goal that they hit, the creator of the game is actually getting paid now because up until that was hit, funding it didn't pay any money past uh, paying the artists and, and, and that. So glad to see that one get hit um and there's an example of some of the dungeon cards that uh, are, are down here that will go through that you can hand out to your players or show them you know if you've got the uh a camera or something like that to, to give them an idea of descriptions of rooms and things so uh again fairly simple system take a look at it um hopefully you all are interested if you have uh if you want more information tom actually did an interview with the designers we have a show and tell i think it's 108 um but if you just go to our website or to our podcast and search you down a dungeon you'll find it so we have a full interview with the creator about the game true All right. ellen anything on this one um i like that one of the stretch goals is a poster in like an old school like comic ad style that's really cool um everything else i think you covered but All right. that was just a cool little note <laughs> 
All right. So then we are finally back to Ellen now. Uh, <laughs> so is it Corico? I don't know. Corico, <laughs> probably. Uh, a magical year uh, is on Kickstarter. Um, it is uh, actually, Jim, all, I think all of ours are on Kickstarter this year that, or this, this, this week. That's not always the case. Like we do mm -hmm. look at all the other places, but we just didn't find anything this time. Yeah. Um, this is a tarot driven story game of novice witches, urban exploration and teenage drama for solo and shared world play. That was all the sent like that sentence I, plus the cover art was all it needed to sell me on it. So I was like, if, if we look up Ellen in the dictionary, that's the definition, right? <laughs> yeah it's tarot it's solo it's witches like and the art is cute so i was like yeah, done sure, sure. um all right um but yes uh so the that little blurb explains a lot of it but essentially you are playing as a witch who is spending a year in this um location corico and um meeting people learning things doing magic and one of the cool things about it is this note about shared worlds. There are optional rules that if you and like a friend both have this book or have the rules or share it or whatever, you can solo play and then write letters to each other. Like you are people from the same hometown or whatever, you know each other and like have that shared experience without actually needing to play and schedule time at the same table. Mm. So um, that's, I thought that was really cute. And um, I'm a, an English nerd. So like that's, appeals to my like pastoral letter writing nature so that was very cool um the book itself is very polished looking um that was one of the things that drew me into this kickstarter as well um it they go into all the details of the lamination and the foiling and the ribbon and the page sewing and all kinds of stuff like that but um basically it looks like a very well put together book and um tears so first you have the digital only, which is um, about uh, $14 US. Um, and then the, that is, so that's just digital. Um, and it also creates a digital community copy. Um, then the resident tier uh, includes the hardback book and the digital copy and the community copy. And then the shipping will be charged later in backer kit. And that is at about $32. And then the, uh, more exclusive uh, version is the $48 US one, which is the patron, and you get an extra little bonus postcard and a bonus patch, and essentially the bonus to that is um, a an NPC, a confidant that you will be able to add to your game with that bonus postcard, and so that's like a little something extra if you want, if you have a few extra dollars you want to uh, send to this um, creator and you know to support the project so that i like those kinds of things where it's not like game breaking if you don't have it you know mm -hmm. like it's not like sometimes kickstarters like to do like the exclusive tiers and have something that like people would really really want to have but don't have the money to you know support so like this is i like the very low impact like fun but low impact additions to those kinds mm -hmm. of tiers um uh add-ons oh the um one of the reasons why i was excited about this is because the creator um made the game artifact which is a, another solo journaling game about like magical items you are, are a sentient item and let you go about like describing the process of how you were created and where you've been and stuff like that and so i have that game off of itch and i like it a lot um you can get a uh print version of it as an add-on and they're going to do a very fun concertina fold zine and they have a little gif that explains how you open that and look at it and stuff and it's very cool um and then they have another game called orbital um that they have done that i have also um purchased previously so i have i'm aware of this uh author whose name is jack harrison with mousehole press and i've liked the stuff that has come from them before um they have met their goal. They have more than met their goal. They like incredibly exceeded their goal. They are at $188,000 um, out of just under $6,000 uh, for their goal. And they have 15 days to go. It ends on November 7th. Um, and fulfillment is uh, for the hardcover is looking to be September of next year. And then um, for the digital July of next year. 
Larry. I think I covered everything. <laughs> right. I think you did as well. All right. So Larry, what do you think about this one, buddy? Uh, the, what caught me about it was this might be a really good introduction to solo type gaming because that's not something I do much of. Um, and I'm going to look hard at this one, at least jumping in for simply that reason myself. I do, I'm also a sucker for the community copies. You know, it's pretty reasonable to get a digital copy and that unlocks a community copy for someone else. So I, I really like that. And then just, um, again, I was kind of skimming through here, you know, the, the creator is working with a printer that's like, a walk from their house and they can go down there and Aww. check in on it and you know um be assured that everything will be done timely because they're not trying to deal with emails back and forth across continents and everything and uh yeah it's it's a very cool neat looking thing i'm glad it's doing so well um i just you know hopefully they can use this to propel them onto something else in the future and excuse me all right so my last official one this week because i do have a shout out or two <laughs> um, is the 12 Trials of Tilreath, uh, which is just a, a set of one shots for D&D 5e ranging from first to 12th uh, level. Yes, the number 12 in the title is what caught my eye originally. Uh, this is another one of those campaigns that I just, I really think Kickstarter, like there, you know, it's like these weird spectrums of what Kickstarter does and can do for people. We've had, you know, we had a campaign early. It was at 1.4 million. I'm guessing if we check now, it's probably at 1.5 already. Then we have the Savage Worlds one that, you know, it's like, a hundred thousand dollars, uh, Kiki or whatever the Kiriko is like 180,000. Yeah. And then here's one that's like 700 bucks. And I'm sure they're thrilled to have been there. So this one is created by Brian, Brian C. If you, if you're nasty, the third they've created, they've back to, um, it, it is converted to us dollars, but we're basically at $686 on a goal of 439 still has two weeks to go ending on November 6. So again, when a catacomb ends and essentially this is just 12 short adventures to play in D and D that range from level one to level 12. Uh, so they all come with art and maps and layout, uh, Brian here, he's a professional writer and graphic designer. Um, so again, this is this third they've created. So they have some experience with Kickstarters. Uh, from what I could see, the last one was funded on or delivered on time. So again, this is a very sort of simple pared down. There's not a lot to it. You can look at uh, the previous uh, campaigns they've held, one of which is now on drive through. So you could go there, you could get it that way. Um, but I just, I'm sometimes drawn to these sort of like small independent creators, just creating a thing, putting it out in the world, seeing if it sticks. Um, and I like to support those as well. So just sort of a, um, was it an apertise in, in relation to my other ones? I just wanted something small and simple. Uh, so if you play D and D, you like the number 12, you like adventures for a pretty small amount of money, hard to beat this one, basically eight bucks us gets you, the, all the 12 adventures. And then they have an $11 pledge, which is the 12 adventures plus two adventures. So it'd be 14 adventures if you're keeping up and as well <laughs> as some random encounter charts for various um, environments. So again, super simple, super pared down. There's a couple examples of the layout and the art. It looks professional to me. It looks great. We got, it looks like a ghost ship. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've got, you know, $5 or $11 and want to get some adventures, throw it their way. So it's already at six ninety seven. Did one of you back it? <laughs> I did. Okay, yeah, there. I was like, oh yeah, this is very easy to <laughs> support a small creator. Plus, I like the Ambush Canyon art. I like the um, it's a fantasy take on uh, a Western style, and I was like, I love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, and I do play five E. So I don't run five E, but that's okay. I can hand it off to someone else. <laughs> exactly. All right, all right, Larry. Anything on this one, or we'll move on. I was just busy clicking the button to pledge in uh, for that because yeah, that's, that's cool. Now, can I ask real quick though, it says from first to 12th level. So is each one just that level of adventure or. So the way I understand it, yes, there's 12 okay. adventures and each one is designed for first, second, then third, then fourth and fifth and all the way up. Now, again, obviously there's usually a range like it came like this is from fourth to fifth level. Um, so I don't know if it's balanced perfectly for that, but that that is my understanding based off of what I read is that there's 12 and each one is uh, for a specific level, but I could be mistaken. Because again, if you look at the Kickstarter, there's like three paragraphs. There's not a lot of detail, mm -hmm. which is, again, I think is a good thing, but there might be, it might be in the facts or might be in some of the updates. I, I didn't know what those. They did say in there that they have been play tested by more, more than one group. So um, that is a good 
good thing. So I think having a nice range of levels is always handy for your various groups. And 12 is good. All right. <laughs> so we're going to flip things back over and we're going to back, let Ellen do her third. I'm just, I'm a wild today. Just can't, can't contain oh me goodness. in a box. All right. Uh, so we were looking at kids on bikes, second edition. Yes. I never played kids on bikes first edition. I am going into this completely <laughs> blind. Um, I have heard positive things for the most part from people. And like, it has obviously spawned a lot of um, mimicry in the, you know, community. Um, but honestly, like I'm very, very much uh, easily swayed by cool aesthetics and this Kickstarter page, even if you're not going to back it, just look at it. It's very cool. It's a very good way to draw in your audience. And I think they do a lot of things right in making um, it easy to read, easy to follow, and just like compelling to look at. So I think that from like a Kickstarter, like a uh, creator perspective, they did a lot of stuff right. Um, so uh, Kids on Bikes, uh, we already talked about this when we talked about the Savage Worlds version. Like, it's a fun genre. I've never played it myself, so I'm looking forward to trying it out or at least reading the rules. Um, they have a lot of cool Kickstarter exclusives that I did manage to resist. Um, <laughs> except for, you, the, except for the hardcover. I did get the hardcover, but <laughs> we're, we're not talking about that. Um, but they have really cool dice, and they have a backpack, and they have... Actually, they have two sets of really cool dice. Um, and then they have uh, add-ons from Norse Foundry with has like brochure maps, which I think is really cool, and arcade tokens. Um, and then you can get a character journal, which looks like a marble uh, marble notebook from school, and it's just it's just really charming, uh, I think. And um, it seemed like a good good entry here. Plus, uh, they have a lot of names that they are. Um, drawing from the community to uh, add as contributors for the adventure zine, um, including Tanya DePass, um, HTTP Paladin, I'm just picking specifically the people that I know that I follow on Twitter, um, Aubria, uh, let's see who else, uh, Jasmine, Bular, like all, all these, when I scrolled through, I was like, oh, I follow you, I follow you, I follow you. So like, um, it was just a good, um, good recommendation to me that these people were willing to be involved and also like we're potentially going to you know get paid if all of the funding works out which i'm going scrolling back up to the top for the funding uh they are at 118,000 out of a two uh, 20,000 goal um since they have 17 days to go i'm sure that they're gonna get much more money than this um but the uh campaign ends on november 9th and we are looking at things getting sent out to people. It looks like everything starts the soonest at July next year. And they look like they are planning on having the physical stuff ready by then. So July. And um, there are a bunch of different tier levels for pledges. Uh, the cheapest is obviously just the access to the pledge manager, which people like to do just in case people can't commit at the beginning of the campaign. Um, you can do $1 and just get your space saved, um, but uh, $25 for the PDF, and it also includes virtual tabletop materials, which is pretty cool. Um, then uh, $35 for the PDF and soft cover, $45 for the hard cover, which I was convinced to get by my own brain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, $75 for the PDF hard cover, and one of the uh, two dice sets. One is glow in the dark, and the other is retro rainbow. They're both cool looking. And then um, 150 for all kinds of stuff, including the exclusives such as the arcade tokens, the NPC deck, the map pack, and the backpack. And then the huge tier, which is uh, $250, um, you get everything, including the adventure zine, and um, you get both sets of dice. You get two sets of arcade tokens, and you get two character journals in addition to the hardcover and the PDF and then everything else. Nice. And it looks like they've, they've hit all their currently listed stretch goals. Mm -hmm. The last one was at 110,000. So I don't know if they're planning on adding any more or not, but uh, I mean, they've already crushed multiple of them. That's awesome. I said, I'm a huge fan of this genre of game. This is probably one of my biggest regrets in life is that the moment Stranger Things was a thing, I did not go, I need to create a game called Kids on Bikes because that is like the most <laughs> obvious, simple, like the fact that, they were the first to do it. Got to give them credit there. 
And again, I, I played the first edition at Gen Con a few years ago. I really enjoyed the way that that version of the game works with basically all the players create the town that the mystery is centered on and you create elements of the mystery that you'll be probably playing through the way you create your characters. There's charts for like this character wronged you in some way, but you've never told them what did they do? And you know, this character, you look up to them, what did they do that makes you admire them type of thing. And I know other games have done this, but I like that version of it. So you start the game with a really well-defined town that you helped create. You have great relationships with each other. I think aids with role play. I just wasn't a fan of how the actual, I want to jump the, ditch on my, on my bike. How do I do that? I wasn't a fan of how those worked. I don't know if this version has updated that or not, but I'll definitely be looking into it. And this is one I, I will probably end up backing at digital, if nothing else, just to have that because I'm a sucker for the genre of games. All right. Anything from you, Larry? Did you see the Kickstarter exclusive dice? That's what, I did. The green wow. glow in the dark. It's yeah. pretty sweet. Die it's hard really dice. Cool. They produce good stuff. Yes. I love those... die hard. Yes. It's a good movie too. <laughs> um, all right. So this brings us to our last official uh, campaign. This is another one for Larry and it's the flip yes. die also on Kickstarter. Yes. Again, like you just mentioned on Kickstarter and this week we have had a few blockbusters. This one is flip die the world's first die you flip like a coin, which I thought was a bit hokey when I first I had saw it everywhere like ads on Facebook and stuff. And then I ended up checking it out and I don't know why, but it really just it drew me in and I was just like, these things are gorgeous and I think it's cool, but it's completely a hundred percent an auxiliary dice set because they don't do anything different. They no. generate numbers randomly. There's a coin for each of your standard dies in a seven set like RPG set. So you've got your D4, D6, D8, 10, 12, D percent and D20 in there. Um, it's sitting just around 1.7 million right now. Pledged uh, a goal of 15,000. Um, this one is done by Tanner Yarrow. This is only his fourth Kickstarter that he's done, or back to like 42. I looked into his other Kickstarters, and while a lot of them, they're all physical, there's he did a, a, a book of physical tabletop like uh, battle maps. A lot of things that were printed, especially overseas, were delivered late, but people are still very happy with what they got when, you know, when they got it was late, but the products he's been delivering on, and some of those were like $300,000 Kickstarters, multiple hundred thousand, and uh, he goes through and is talking about this one, he's got everything set up to where even if it's pledged, if, if this would still double in just the next few days or whatever, he says that everything is in place to make these di these coins and have them delivered on a reasonable time so it sounds like the setups are there so this is still something to take a look at it's only running through the 28th of october so at this point there's only five days probably five four or five days left to take a look at it but it's again likely you've seen it already if you're interested in this but he says it's the first dice you flip like a coin, and there is a two-year thought process and design process that went into this that is detailed lower down there. Um, it's ex it's pretty expensive. It's I mean, you're talking about on par with a set of your like crystal rock dice set, like a hundred bucks for a full set of these. These are um he goes through several tests and shows you beating them, dropping them, people playing with them at different cons. Uh it it breaks apart the die, shows you how the there's a, a a little ball bearing inside that ends up landing uh, for your final spot to to tell you what the number has been decided by the you know randomness of the coin and all that was kind of neat i thought it was nice that he showed you exactly how it looks inside and why it's supposed to be uh, you know a legitimate thing and not yeah it's as, as at least as random as dice and there's some charts in there that uh, are going through that as well but the things are wow to me they're gorgeous um let's see uh the actual die are roughly the same size mostly in a just circular pattern but then you've got like a, i think it's a d4 that's or a d8 that's more of a squarish but overall they're looking at uh, i think it was two um sorry i had to convert from metric here oh, just shy of two inches by uh a half inch like 50 millimeter by 10 millimeter and each full set was just comes in at under a pound. So shipping on these is a little bit 
you know, a little bit expensive and each full set that you get comes in like a display box and it's got slots for the coins to sit in. So, I mean, there was some definite care and design that's going into this, but the items themselves um, are two halves are soldered together with a, uh, like I said, a uh, ball bearing inside to end up rolling into a slot to determine your final number. So, they do look sturdy as heck, but again, if you're using hard dice on a table, it's, it could scratch it up. So, you know, get something soft to roll in. I don't know. The videos of these things just kind of mesmerize these. They've opened up a set. They've opened up a dragon set, which has got uh, different actual representations on the coins. Uh, the initial set that they came up with, uh, I think, was just called the Seven Realm set. And... So now there's an offering. You have a choice of what's going to be decorating decorating the coins. They're each the same set as far as you know the numbers that are determined. But they have five different finishes now. They've got an antique gold, antique silver, antique bronze, and then if you get the seven realm set, then it comes with a, a mixture of the different ones. And um, I, I, the artistry of these things is what just what got me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was really taken back by how beautiful these things look. And uh, I know you've got a D4 and you've got a metallic coin D4. I mean, a dagger's a dagger, right? But a <laughs> healing potion. But I mean, the way I got to be honest, it's just the 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 feel of these things. I think would make it very uh, cool. I'm I'm just I, I think it looks awesome. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of people back in this. It's almost a 1.8 million. Yeah. Take a look if you haven't already. Uh, it's so intricate the design on these the coin for the crow piece to me is like strawed on one side and then a, a castle on the other side and i don't know it just happened to hit me just like wow i will note shipping <laughs> yeah don't 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 get confused or don't get uh side tracked side tracked or no uh oh. do you get hit from the si sideline now I don't know. Don't side, get swiped. <laughs> side swiped. That's the word I'm looking for. Because a single coin is $7 shipping US. That's a lot for a single thing of anything. And all the way up to the highest level is $83. So, I mean, if you're spending 700 bucks on, on dice coins, I don't guess 83 is going to make or break you. But still, I was a little bit like, wow, that's, that's high for one coin. I was thinking like three to five, maybe. But I might end up getting a D12 just to have it, but there's no <laughs> way I'm going to buy a full set of these. There's, well, I'm that's not saying anyone else shouldn't either or shouldn't, but yeah, for me. Right. No. Your, your, tr your tr or excuse me, the shipping on there, it starts out bad because that's for a coin. But if you get like a Merc set, then that's your full set of coins and it, it doubles the shipping, but you don't, you know, yeah, it's, it's not, not seven, seven times. times. Seven or what, yeah. Yeah, and again, this is expensive. And if you have a special set of dice that you've got, you know, oh, wow. It, yes, it's expensive. Each each full set though comes with, like I said, you get a box which you can display it in if you like. But it also is safer for shipping it that way. And they do send a rolling mat for each uh, one of those as well. So this is mostly it's just like an aesthetic thing. If you look at it, and if you're not wowed, then it's just going to be like that's expensive. Yep, they do but not need my seven dollars or whatever because they are doing. I when I. I didn't look at all these in depth, but I thought for sure that the Monty Python was going to be the top of, top one. So this is being at one point seven. Wow. Well, Good this one's on almost you. this one's almost done. How long has Monty Python got to go? Like three uh, weeks or something? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, so this has only got four days left. Right. It might as well be the. Uh, I was going to say Windbreaker, but that one, the cartoon with the Airbenders and stuff, then that hit like ten million. Or oh, yeah. yeah. That was crazy high, right? Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, so they have met some stretch goals here. You've got lore and item cards, um, an adventure in print and PDF, and that's what um, unlocked the bronze finish option. Just, you know, if you want to take a look, and you can also add on dragon scale dice bags if you want, and special if you get more than one set, you can buy a, a wooden chest coin vault here. I, again, this is just for, look, kind of, you know, look what I've got, I think, because <laughs> I don't know who... But anyway, gorgeous, and uh, I don't know. I, I struck me. I'm a diced person, though. I can never have yeah. too many dice, but I'm going to have to not eat that week. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be worth it. All right, Ellen, any thoughts on flip the die? Um, I guess my one hesitation is it's very interesting to me that they show, like, taking it apart. 
I, I realize that anybody who would spend the money on this would keep them in the box when they're not in use. But my worry is if stuff gets inside it, it might prevent the ball bearing from moving. <laughs> it does show how it's easy to clean with a water hose. So that's they true. Have, they that did is address true. that. Yeah. But um, that's just, that is my one hesitation. Also the fact that like Larry was like, oh yeah, if you're willing to spend like over a hundred dollars on dice. And I was just like, <laughs> not, oh, I've never talking. done that before. <laughs> Everybody feels called out on that one, don't they? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. So I have two quick shout outs. I don't know if any of you do. I don't have the um, the, the setup to show it off if you do. But of course, a catacon is just a week and a few days away. So not the weekend we're heading towards, but the weekend after. Uh, Saturday was a wild ride. If you are following me on social media, I got a call Saturday at, or Friday, sorry, at 5 p.m., that our hotel isn't going to be open. They're closing down the couple of days before our event. The hotel still hasn't told me this. I got a call from the Dayton Bureau Visitor Center. So I was scrambling. I Just like I've said before, the, the only secret to my success is that I have lots of other people who are talented, who are willing to help me. And somebody I don't even know, but it's just local to Dayton, contacted me on Facebook, said, here's all the hotels in the area. Here's some of the general manager, just like cell phone numbers, and got me in contact with someone who was able to help us out. Within within, within two hours, we had everything resolved. And, and I, I said before, I'm not a drinker. I would be blackout unconscious if I had been, because I was as stressed for those two hours as I probably ever have been. It was absolutely just, I mean, it just came out of nowhere. I had... I, that's not what I was trying to think about, but we got it done. So we do now have a new hotel. It's the Holiday Inn and Express Southwest Dayton. It's like four blocks away. So it's not terrible, but maybe not quite walking weather, depending on what it's like in Dayton, Ohio in a couple of weeks. Uh, but it's also not 10 miles away, which is what I was afraid of we were going to run into. And it actually turned out to be a little cheaper. Like per, per room, the rates are a little bit better than the Radisson. Um, and we got our VIP mixer room for free. So I actually came out a little bit ahead money-wise, but the stress, I would have gladly paid Radisson that, that money and not have to have those two hours because I'm sure I lost a year of my life on the back end. But if you want to come to a catacomb, you want to have some amazing times, play some games uh, with at least two of the three of us on the screen here going to be there running games. Not sure uh, Ellen's going to make it this year. We, we were hoping that still maybe, but it's not looking as good. Uh, but a catacomb is a wonderful time. Play some games, have some fun. Dayton, Ohio, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after. And then Lexicon is uh, a gaming convention by the same folks who do the Sin City Con. And I go to both of these pretty much every year. We kind of have a relationship. I give them free badges. They give me free badges. Uh, they often actually give me money for my Kickstarters. They've been very supportive. They, they've, they've been around longer than a Catacon and they, they know what they're doing. They're a little bit bigger than us and they've been very helpful with giving me advice and, and getting money. Um, so I'm a big fan of theirs because they've treated me so well. I'm definitely going to go to Lexicon. It's now it's actually closer to me now that I live in Cincinnati or live in Corbin. Uh, this was the first convention I took my kids to. So last year for Lexicon, I brought my two boys and then I met my friend Joe, who's his son is younger than mine, but he's wanting to get into role playing games. We all went together. We played Pathfinder, talked about on the on podcast. It was a wonderful time. Uh, so this will probably become a yearly event for me and my boy. So definitely excited. Uh, their Kickstarter is not yet funded. They have a week to go. They still need about $1,400. Uh, they are more board game inclined than we are at the RPG, you know, Catacon. Obviously, we're like 60, 40 role-playing games, maybe even 70, 30. They are more like 70, 30 board games. They have a huge play to win. Like they have like, like hundreds of play to win games or, or maybe a hundred. I have like 13, 14, maybe 20 if we're lucky. Uh, they have a, a, a game library they bring in from the outside. Like I have a pretty nice selection, but these are all basically my games. They bring in like a game collection. So they have hundreds and hundreds of games you can borrow, all kinds of events, vendors, all the stuff you see at a catacomb, but just a little bit bigger, more people, and a little bit more focused on board games. So if you are in Lexington or, or willing to drive there, I think their dates for next year are April 21st to the 23rd. So I will be there. I don't know if I'll be running anything because this has now become the convention I bring my boys to. So I probably will just be running games, um, but we'll see. There might be some action in 12 cinema. Depends on how that Kickstarter goes. Anyway, so do either of you have any shout outs you want to try to pull up really fast? Otherwise, we will move on. I've got one for on Kickstarter called Ravens, a game of wit, guile, and agility. Uh, this one is a modern twist on a classic German card game called Life and Death or Todd und Lieben. 
but uh, a friend a, of mine that runs a long con down Longview, Texas, uh, I think this is a buddy of his is uh, Kickstarter and it's okay. got 31 days to go and it's $800 shy of goal. Uh, $2,800 is their goal. So take a look at that if you like uh, some card action-y card uh, type games. All right. I was able Short to get this pulled up. So at least I have it on the screen. And uh, again, if anybody's listening now or in the future, all the links to all these pro projects will be in the show notes as they are every year, every year, every time my brain. Uh, but now we're ready to move on to what we call the going last Memorial pick starter event. Uh, again, going last is one of my favorite podcasts around for a very long time. Sadly, it has pod faded, but one of the things they did that I thought was really fun is when they covered Kickstarters, they would play this little game that, that would suppose that each of us, have access to all the imaginary money in the world. We can spend as much as we want on any one of these campaigns at any level that we want. But in doing so, we are excluded. We are siloed off. We can never even play the other games, even if someone else backs them and we could go to their house. No, you cannot do that. So it is very much an all or nothing prospect. So Larry, I'm going to start with you this week. Out of, out of the nine official ones we covered, which would be your pick starter? I really uh, got drawn into, since this is going to get, be the go big, go home, this is the only one you can play, right? I'm going to go throw in all for the Monty Pythons because, yeah, a lot of emotional attachment to that from the, the years watching their movies and playing silly games that devolve into the Knights of Knee yelling at each other and whatnot. Yeah, I'm going to throw in with that one because it's also fairly expensive for that upper tier. I'm going to uh, use your fantasy money, sir. Fair, fair. And, and, and that makes sense. If, if any of these deserves fantasy money, I think it's the money. <laughs> one. All right, Ellen. So what about you? What are your thoughts this week? Um, usually this is incredibly hard for me. It's always a little painful for me to think about just the conceit that we have going. Um, while it would pain me not to be able to play the Corico solo game, I have to go with um, Pine Box Middle School and Horror Companion because it is a two for one. I need the horror companion for Savage Worlds. Like, I just need it physically, emotionally, spiritually. <laughs> um, and the fact that there's going to be a kids on bike setting for ETU is just like, that makes all sorts of light bulbs go off in my brain. So, so you actually to have to pick this one because otherwise you can't play Pine Box. Correct. Right. I, I, so, it would be a matter of life and death for me. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, so this one, there's a couple big contenders for me. That flip die, which I have like, no way in the world do I need that. But if I have other people's imaginary money, then why not get like 12 sets, right? You know, again, if I'm playing with other people's money, that'd be a cool thing. Like the collector's chest. Like I'd get so many that I would put them in like the game as a as a prop. Like you get a bag of coins. I, I just drop a physical dice bag full of those on the table. And then like one of them's like the one antique where all the others are silver and that's the cursed one. And when I go through and pick it up, like, ha ha, you're cursed. I could have a lot of fun if I could spend like $7,000 of other people's money. Uh, Monty Python, also very high at the list because I would go with all in the the twit level. Uh, you know, maybe you can get two of those, get the, the catapults and flip and dice each other. That sounds like a good time. But I'm actually with Ellen here. If I'm going to spend other people's money, I'm going to get, I'm already back that one at the digital level. I'd love to have all the little bells and whistles that come with it. I will definitely get use out of that in that campaign that I'm going to be running soon. So that's, for me, that's the probably the easy choice. But that's only 250 bucks. Again, I could spend 7,000 on flip die. That, 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 that's, not, that's a pretty good pull as well. All right, so that is the show for today. So for anybody who might be watching this, because this is, a, again, this is the first time doing this on Twitch. We're going to try to start doing this every other Sunday. That's generally the way this works. But I believe every other Sunday would be a catacon, and I will not be here for that one. So we're going to skip, and then we'll keep on the same two-week rotation. So it'll basically be a month before our next show. Uh, the audio-only version will come out probably in a few hours once I get it edited, and it will go out on YouTube as well in a couple of days. But we really hope anybody who is watching now in the future, appreciate you hanging out with us. If you have campaigns that you yourself are running or just one that you're interested in, backed in, maybe you have a friend of a friend of a friend who's doing it, let us know. We will take a look. I can't guarantee we'll cover it on the show, but that is kind of what we're trying to do here. So you can email the show at therpgacademy at gmail.com, or you can hit us up individually on social medias. Again, mine is the RPG Academy. Ellen, where can people find you? At Ellen underscore Delina, D-A-L-I-N-A -A, on Twitter. And then Larry. Mumfrey999 on Twitter, please. 
And again, there'll be links in the show notes for all these campaigns, as well as our social media and any of the other projects that we're part of, like uh, the podcast and Twist Dreams Ellen does and, and Larry and then all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so before we go, we like to say one thing here all the time, and that is if you're having fun, you're doing, doing it, right. it right. That is correct. So thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.